different ways. In today's day, today's the 24th of October. This is the last full week in October. We're almost in November. And in December, we just have to Transporting the thing it's passing through. Has everybody got that part? something is it is the type of medium and the type of medium you need to know is air gas solids or vacuum are the four types of medi mediums that waves pass through so the wave's job is to transport energy from one place to another now it only transports energy it does not transport the actual thing like we learned in sound it's transporting the particles which is the energy that makes the particles bounce off each other and that makes the energy go on down until it gets to where it's going, right? There isn't an object that's actually going up and down that way like on a roller coaster or something, okay? And the four types of mediums that waves pass through is air, solid, gas, and vacuums. Now solids could be metal, wood, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of solids. What's it mean by vacuum? Vacuum? Yeah. There's vacuums that are created, and we'll get deeper into it as we go on. Okay? Some waves will only travel through vacuums. It's passing through. A mechanical wave is a type of wave that physically vibrates, oscillates. And okay, mechanical wave is one of these types of waves, and it physically vibrates or as osculates the medium that it's going through. So a mechanical wave physically vibrates or osculates the medium. So with knowing that that's what a mechanical wave is, is that what our sound wave is? Or is, it, is it a mechanical wave? No? no? Doesn't it make your ear vibrate? Yes, it is a mechanical wave. Sound waves are mechanical waves. Uh, vibrates or oscillates the medium it is transferring the energy through. The medium that it is transferring the energy through. Don't forget that due to low test scores, 
that I will be checking notebooks. So if you are not taking notes, you need to be, or you're gonna have a bad grade on your notebook check grade. So you people that decide just to write down part of it and not all of it. There are three main types of mechanical waves. Okay, so there are three types, three main types of mechanical waves, and we're gonna talk about all three of them. Three main types of mechanical waves. Write it and then skip a few lines and then write the next one. Give your rooms, give yourself, you're not going to take a lot of notes over each one, but you do need room to take some notes over each one. Mr. Jones, you got these three types of waves wrote down? Okay, you got these down. Three types of mechanical waves. Now, these aren't just three types of waves in general. These are three types of mechanical waves. Transversal, longitudinal, and surface. Well, they will benefit you because one goes with one and one goes with the other and another one goes with the other. But you might want to wait. You can write it down like past the word or something. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, they are. Which direction do you mean you move? Transverse waves or S waves. Okay, a transverse wave, also referred to as an S wave. S waves transfer energy by moving the medium back and forth. Transfers the energy by moving the medium back and forth. Transversal waves, also known as S waves, transfers the energy by moving it back and forth. You got that part done? There's more to it, so just hold on. Has everybody got this down? at a right angle to the energy movement. At a right angle to the energy movement. Everybody show me what a right, use your arm or your hands to show me what a right angle is. Oh. Okay, or you can do this. Oh. I just want to make sure you knew. How many degrees is that? 90. 90, 90 degrees. <clears throat> so transversal waves moves its energy um, back and forth at the right angle. All right, did everybody get the transversal one? Now you're going to the longitudinal wave, also known as the P wave. And it transfers energy, energy and expanding the by compressing and expanding. which means this is the type of mechanical wave that a sound wave was, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, how are we supposed to know that, Miss Tina? Well, here's your key words, and the, that's right, compression. The peak of a sound wave was called the compression, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And we know that the waves um, expanded back and forth. We know that from the, slink, uh, the slinky demonstration. Right? Because when you pushed in, it went in. We got to all go closer together, and then we pulled out, it went back out. So, yes, longitudinal wave. So, a sound wave is a mechanical wave and a longitudinal wave. So,
sometimes referred to as one or the other or just sound wave. But you need to know all of them. All right, so everybody got this part? Through an energy to move the energy through a medium to move the energy forward. So it moves in what? It don't move in a 90 degree, it moves in a what? A medium. Longitudinal. Longitudinal, which is horizontal, right? Isn't this a horizontal? I mean, you don't have to know that, but you might want to know the symbol. Mm -hmm. Yes. Through compression, through um, compressions and expanding. And surface waves, trip. Okay, now you got surface waves. And it transfers energy, energy by, displacing the medium in a circular by displacing the medium in a circular motion. Good on that one. Did everybody get that? Yeah. Do I need to go back? Do you have any questions? Yeah. Now we're going to learn, learn more about waves. If the volume catches up. Password for that. Make sure it will connect and run better. Waves transfers energy from one place to another. Waves transfers energy from one place to another. Which we kind of already know that. From the last video. They don't transfer any matter. They don't transfer so any matter. Passing a phone screen to your eye, or a sound wave passing the speakers to your ear, only energy is being transferred. Sometimes, though, we can interpret that energy as meaningful information. 
was why our brain is able to build up images and tunes from the light and sound that it receives. To travel from one place to another, the waves vibrate or oscillate, as we can see in this displacement distance graph. Alright, y'all need to draw this. The distance is how far the wave has traveled. So draw this out to start with. Everybody must draw this in their book. There is no reason why you can't copy this down in your book. It shows you, gives you all the words, and you need to have it because you will have something like this on your test that you will have to label. So you need it so you can study it. So the first thing he talks about is the distance. The distance is how far the wave has traveled from its starting point. Okay, the distance is how far the wave has traveled from its starting point. the starting point. While the displacement is how from the equilibrium point the wave has oscillated. Alright, so then the equilibrium is how far, I mean the oscillation or the displacement is how far from the equilibrium point the wave has oscillated. So here's the displacement point and this is your wave oscillating. So it's how far from the equilibrium point that the wave has oscillated. Okay, that's good. So how far it's gone up or down? So how far it's gone up or down? You don't have that up there, but I would put it up there if I was you. In that little box. And the one where it talks about what the displacement is. Oh. I would put here, I put a comma and then I would put how far it goes up and down or down. That way you know what oscillation means. It's going up and down. It's not going from side to side, back and forth. It goes up and down. Do you need to move closer to the TV screen? You better get caught up with us. You don't have your definition up here over distance. The maximum displacement is known as the amplitude. Okay, so the aptitude is the maximum of displacement. That means it's at the highest point that it can go. Okay, and how we measure the amplitude is from this line here, which you know what we always consider that our baseline basically. From the baseline up to what we call the peak. In sound wave, it was called the compression. Um, they're going to call it the crest here in a minute. So the aptitude is the maximum displacement. Yes. Can it also be called the corner? Um, I don't. I don't remember that then, and when we studied it and did it before in um, science, because you know we try to use scientific words. All right, so everybody got that? Did you draw your little arrows? Did you write aptitude up there? And then also put down what the aptitude was.
while the distance of one entire oscillation is called the wavelength. All right, so then we have a wavelength. So the wavelength is the distance of one entire oscillation. Okay, the wavelength is the distance of one entire oscillation. from equilibrium up, down, back up, or it could be from the very top of a wave, which we call the crest, down and back up to the next crest. Alright, so they call the top of the wave the crest, so the wavelength is from crest to crest. But it has to go all the way down and all the way back up. That's how they figure the distance. All the way down and all the way back up. But it runs, when you're figuring it, you, they run from the top of one crest to the next crest. Any questions on that? So the top of the wave, when they're just talking about waves in general, is called the crest. Um, the wavelength is from one crest to the other. And it has to go up. And, you know, it has to go all the way down and back up. Okay? And the aptitude is from the base, is the distance, the highest distance of the peak wave or the crest. That's aptitude. It's to be one entire oscillation. Okay, so you, know, you need to know that it's one entire ex oscillation. If you didn't put that on there. Wavelength, the distance of one entire oscillation. And the opposite of the crest is called the trough. And the, down below, the bottom the peak, or the lowest point the peak goes, is called the trough. got that? So if I tell if I tell you to model, if I put a, a diagram up there that just says displacement and distance and tell you to model it and label it, this is what I want. And there will be something similar to that on the test. So you need to know this. Now, sometimes you might see a displacement time graph instead, which looks pretty much the same. But because we have time on the x-axis instead of distance, the length of one from... Okay, so if the baseline has time written out beside it instead of distance, then the, uh, that, the time, instead of it being the distance, it's the amount of time it takes for it to travel from one crest to the other, okay? It's the only thing different. It says distance, that's the amount, how long it, you know, the distance it took. It says time, how long did it take it to, to travel that distance, okay? But you need to know that sometimes it will have time, sometimes it will have distance. Complete oscillation would be the time period instead of the wavelength. So instead of it being called the wavelength, if they're talking about time, it's called the time period. So 
it's um, it measures the time and the time goes from crest to crest is measured from crest to crest so basically the only thing different between the wavelength and the time period is distance or the amount of time okay takes the same path the time period is just the time it takes for one complete oscillation the benefit of knowing the time period is that we can then use this equation here to work out frequency which is measured in hertz and is the number of complete oscillations per second Okay, so the reason we do it in time is so that we can figure out the frequency. Okay, so like frequency. The frequency, we're figuring the frequency and we have to know the time period to be able to figure, to figure the frequency. Frequency, you use the time period. Frequency, which is measured in hertz. Frequency is measured in hertz. The number of complete oscillations per second. And it's the number of complete oscillations per second. So on this wavelength that we have up here, how many complete oscillations do we have? Somebody with the raise of a hand. Peyton. Two. Two? Do I have two peaks and two troughs? Or two crests and two troughs? Mm -hmm. Or do I have four? I just have two. I have this one and this one, right? So that is one. Okay? So it's from crest to crest. So we have one complete oscillation. For us to have two complete oscillations, we'd have to have four crests. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? We will stop there and pick back up tomorrow. Is that our timer? Yes. That's about where the rest of them got. For the other hour. Run that thing off, please.